Hi everybody, this is Asim Kapoor, founder and chief architect of Arc People Solutions, and I am back again with an extremely interesting conversation about a topic uh, which I think is not not just relevant in this region, uh, but potentially across the entire world. And I have with me today Phil Street. Phil Street is the founder and director of Momentum Recruitment. Uh, Phil, Phil has been in the uh, recruitment space for hospitality for the last 17 years. Uh, and six years back, his passion pushed him to launch Momentum Recruitment, uh, of which, like I mentioned, he's the founder as well. Uh, Phil focuses on uh, senior level executive recruitments and has been a specialist in this, uh, in this field for a long time. Uh, but what drives him is his focus on value-based, people-based uh, selection, uh, where you know, organizations who are looking at adding value to themselves with executives who are strongly driven by a values philosophy, uh, you know, he likes to get involved and help hire the right people. So Phil, thank you so much for your time today and thank you for being here. Thank you, thanks for inviting me. No, pleasure is all mine. Uh, Phil, you know, I think the entire, um, uh, um, you know, environment the way it is currently has led to a lot of changes and everything when it comes to recruitment. I think recruitment is in that whole process of being completely revitalized and revamped and being looked at in a different in different way. But being in that senior level executive recruitment space, what are some of the changes uh, or changes in mindset that you have seen uh, which drive this philosophy? Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, it's it's probably too early to tell if this is a if these are permanent changes or just to um, you know respond to to the environment that we're in right now. Right. But I think the the obviously one of the the major things at the moment is the, the the talent pool has been displaced just because of the crisis in many different areas, the Middle East in, included. Lots and lots of people are now beginning to find themselves out of work, and this is I'm uh, focusing specifically on on hospitality at the moment because that's where my main space is. Right. Um, but actually, what the best talent is still generally employed. Right. That's what that's what we're finding. So actually, a lot of the rules haven't really changed. Mm. Now, what you might find in that is that that people's because of the challenges that people are facing on a day to day basis in terms of you know, one of the main things for a business at the moment is survival. Right. Um, and that can be a, a, a stressful place to be if you're not in the right place. Um, so you do, we are seeing lots more engagement with candidates in terms of them looking, they're quite happy to just see what's going on, see what's going on out there. Right. Um, but not that, that doesn't necessarily then translate to them going all the way through to, to taking a role because senior candidates are still pr pretty strategic in their uh, view of things and still pretty strategic in the way that they view their own career. Right. And, uh, and a lot of that is then centered around a, the risk reward. Right. Um, so, you know, okay, what's the risk of me staying versus the risk of going and vice versa. Um, and, a, and a lot of the time people are, and this is, this happens actually historically, this happens in every downturn. Right. People are happy to look, but probably a little bit more, they're, they're siding on the propensity to stay. Right, right, right. Because again, I guess, you know, I guess one of the golden rules is if in a crisis like this, you have got to get going, you know, stick with it and stay with it till, you know, something kind of changes. Because again, whilst some opportunities may come uh, as a result of the downturn as well, people would be a bit hesitant to leave something or somewhere where they are well settled and you know they kind of you know know the people and so on and so forth right but you Absolutely. know from an organization's point of view right when when it comes to recruiting senior talent you just see a whole lot of buzzwords being thrown around whether seriously or not seriously or you know kind of a, because it's a trend people tend to talk about it so you hear terms like oh we want agile leaders we want leaders who are multifaceted we want people who are intrapreneurs we want go-getters you know so so these are all i'm sure as a recruiter you get you know in your in the in the in the um, uh, profile specification or whatever you call it you get all these kind of things but when it comes to actually selecting, do organizations actually, does that translate into reality for organizations or do they still tend to go for the more traditional um, kind of profiles? Yeah, do you know what, uh, the buzzwords, I have a, a, a weird relationship with buzzwords. I think buzzwords just get rebranded 
and changed over the course of time. It's nothing really actually changes. Right. Uh, the, the other one is pivot. We have that a lot uh, in the UK. Uh, what have you you pivoted? And that's basically just are you agile? Can you move with right. The times right? Um, but I, I think the the bones of that haven't changed at all. I think companies don't want to get. For me, they don't want to get bogged down in how is a candidate going to add value to me? They've got to look at it in both ways. How are we adding value to them as well? That's right. when the best partnerships happen. That's when you get sparks fly with right. people. So I wouldn't, if I was an organization that was recruiting, I wouldn't get caught up in the buzzwords. Um, and you know, everybody gets fatigued in the end with buzzwords. Right. Just focus on, you know, your, your company's goals and objectives. What do we need in the, what are the gaps in the candidate? Right. pool that we have right. and then bring in that but make sure that you're adding value to that human being as well right no i fully agree and and we do tend to get bogged down because i remember getting like one specification to find somebody you know it's like we want a dynamic agile go get up somebody who questions the new norm and yes he better be a millennial and i'm like <laughs> i don't think that kind of even exists anymore you know i and yeah. some, Right. So, so you're, you're totally right. But, you know, another trend that we see picking up and, you know, you can see it on the various platforms and everything as well is, is the whole mindset around gig economy. Right. So people who are subject matter experts, they have taken this as the opportunity to do something of their own. Um, and then they offer their services as like a subject matter expert. Do you see any of that kind of going into um, senior level recruitment where people want to hire specialists, but perhaps for a shorter period of time, uh, you know, to do a particular project only, or is it still full, uh, full on permanent headcounts, uh, full time headcounts that they look for? I think um, probably a little bit of both, to be honest. I think the, um, th that trend was already here right. uh, before COVID hit. It's uh, certainly what I could see was that companies were beginning to tune into the fact that um, it's you don't always need a full permanent headcount to make the change or make the direction or you know head in the direction that you're you're heading in you right. just need that little slot in for six months or whatever of, of that piece of expertise right. I don't see the gig economy as pronounced at senior level but for me as a, a as a business owner myself actually logistically it makes sorry, logically, not logistically, it makes perfect sense to me that it should be explored, especially in a time where there are so many question marks about the route out, what's business going to look like on the other side of this. Right. You know, you, any business that's that's got their business plan is looking at that at the moment going, is this, is this going to be right? Who right. knows? Right. So that short term view is probably very much around, okay, so what do we need to navigate this particular moment? Right. And if we need to just plug in for six months with somebody rather than making a full time permanent uh, uh, mm -hmm. recruitment, then then let's look at it. But yeah. I do think um, that any business that's looking to move forward does need that nucleus of stability right. to to really move forward. So I think it's about finding the balance really and and that's probably one of the greatest sit on the fence answers i've ever given to any question <laughs> <laughs> no, but to be honest with you it, it does actually summarize perhaps a lot of the thought process that people have but are unable to verbalize because you know it may require taking some difficult decisions to say this is my nucleus these four roles five roles whatever where we needed everything else can be potentially experts who come and go and we will be able to still move forward right so yeah. no no totally agree so i mean uh, i mean considering the, the situation and you know again being in that space if there was a senior level candidate an executive candidate who's looking for a role what would be two or three key pieces of advice that you would give them yeah I, again for me this this advice probably doesn't change with the times to be honest this is uh, this is core advice that i would give anyone right. and it's it's the same as you know these people are in strategic roles so just start with the end in mind that's mm -hmm. always the first piece of advice what is your objective here what do you want to achieve right. um a lot of people will be in a state perhaps at the moment if they've you know if they lost a job last year and they haven't been able to find a job in the the last nine months which is happening all over the place because you know the the world's just not been in a, a buoyancy recruitment stage right. um there could be a little bit of franticism going on in the mind about, I just need to get a job. Yeah. Um, and 
I, th I think the circumstances are at the moment that people wouldn't begrudge people taking that mm. view. You've got bills to pay and you've got to put food on the table. I think you know it's priority number one. But where you can, just maintain that poise on what your overall strategy is right. um, for your career. Um, um, so that that's that's probably point number one. Um, make sure you've got a quiet virtual space to conduct interviews. Right. That's that's a new one um right. because i think the um i think that's now a, a part of the recruitment piece that uh, that is here to stay i don't think it will dominate the entire process but i think it will now be part of the process right. um going forward right. um and just get your house in order and i don't mean your house house no. your um i mean you know make sure that your cv is sharp right. start with the end in mind again what do people need to see in your cv right. uh focus on your achievements Right. achievements are what set you apart anything else is just a job to job description right. the achievements are the things that you're adding value to right. and that's what companies will want to see i think more than ever before right brilliant well i mean thanks a lot for your time i think that was extremely insightful uh, to all our listeners as well i hope you you had a good kind of an insight into how senior level executive recruitment is kind of working and how companies tend to look at it and what are some of the things from a recruiter point of view as Phil being in that space, what are some of the things they kind of go through. So thank you very much for tuning in and uh, hope to see you next time again. Uh, have a great evening and a day ahead. <laughs>